Hello, this is Michael from Socratica. Today I'd like to explore the rest and color nodes and see how to duplicate their behavior using VEX and also look at some other data like velocity and color, which have a special status inside Houdini. So to get started, let's give ourselves as much room to work with as possible. We're not going to need the main menu bar or the shelf tools. We're not going to use the object tree view. We're not going to use the Python shell or the timeline. This is really all we need for today. We're going to use the viewport. We're going to use the network editor and look at some parameters. To begin, let's make a geometry node and we're going to dive inside and make a platonic solid. In particular, we're going to use a tetrahedron. This is different from a pyramid. A pyramid has a square base. A tetrahedron has triangles everywhere. And next, let's bring up the geometry spreadsheet because what I'd like to do is bounce back and forth between the scene and the data so that we can better understand how some of these nodes operate. So I was using some shelf tools the other day and I noticed a lot of the shelf tools will generate networks that use the rest node. And so I wanted to better understand what that was doing. So here, if we select the platonic node and look at the geometry spreadsheet, we can see the positions for the four points that make up the tetrahedron. Now, if you come over here and select the rest node, you can see all it did was add three new columns. It's rest zero, one, two. And it's notice how the components aren't labeled X, Y, Z like for position, they're numbered zero, one, and two. One shortcut when you're in the network editor is you can, once you highlight a node, you can use page up and page down to change which node is highlighted. So we start off with a tetrahedron, four points. We added the rest node and it made a copy of the position. So, Let's now move some of the points around and make sure the coordinates for the points change while the coordinates for the rest data does not change. So I'm going to come over here and say, let's select this top point, move it in the X direction a little bit, and look at the geometry spreadsheet. We're going to use page up and page down to switch between these two, these various nodes over here. The rest position at the rest node, this is what our spreadsheet looks like. After we moved one point, the only thing that changed was the X coordinate of that one point because we used a little X axis to move it over. That's the only thing that changed. Notice the data in the rest columns was not affected. So when we come over here, if we were to move around a few other points, like let's take this one and move it over here, select this point and move it in this direction and the fourth point and move it as well. We've now moved all four points. And if we switch over to the spreadsheet, at the rest position, this is what we have. If we use page down and see the coordinates are changing for the points, but the rest data is not being changed at all. So I wanted to see if I could duplicate this behavior using VEX because it seems like all that the rest node does is adds a vector called rest and makes a copy of the coordinates for the position vector. One way you can do this is with a wrangle node. We're going to use a point wrangle. And this is a one line bit of vex here. Let's make a vector called rest. We put an at in front to make it an attribute, which means it'll show up in the spreadsheet. And let's just assign it the coordinates of the point, whatever, whichever point we're looping over at the moment. You can see when we evaluate it then, the rest columns are added just like what occurred when we used the rest node bouncing back before, between the rest node and the wrangle, there's no difference. So in a way, the rest node is nothing more than this, this one line of VEX. I wanted to point out something, by the way, if you're a little bit new to VEX, the at means it will appear here as an attribute. It will appear in your spreadsheet. If we said, let's make a vector called rest, we did that, it created the vector called rest, but it didn't put it in the geometry spreadsheet. So what's happening is every time you're looping over all the four points, it temporarily creates a vector called rest. It stores the value of the point, but then nothing ever happens with it. It's not stored. So let's put an at in front so that it does stick around in the geometry spreadsheet. And you could do other things as well. You could say, for example, let's make a float called test attribute and assign it a value of 0.0. .0. Or how about, let's do something more interesting, 3.14159, the value of pi. Because we used an at, it appears as a column or as an attribute in our spreadsheet. If we remove the at, it disappears. 
So there we go, we duplicated the behavior of the rest node with a single line of vex. Now let's come back here and add a little bit of color to this. We're gonna hide the parameters for now. We're gonna do that with a color node. So with the color node, you can come up here in the viewport and click the and click on the color picker. Let's just pick something that looks nice. How about a reasonably nice looking green? And there we go. So what does this node actually do? Well, it makes this shape green. We understand that. But really behind the scenes is it adds another vector, a color vector. Now the position vector has components X, Y, Z. The color vector, C, D, has components RGB for red, green, blue. It's called CD for its color diffuse. And we still have the rest vector hanging around. So this node added a rest vector. This node changed the positions of all four points. And then the color node just added a new vector. It's a typical vector has three components and this has red, green, and blue components. So we were, able to, we were able to imitate the behavior of the rest node using a single line of X. I wanted to see if I could do the same with the color node. First, let's pick the color. So the red value is negative 0.08. So let's come over here and make a new color diffuse vector with a red value that's negative. I'm kind of curious why it's negative. I didn't know you could have a negative red value. I don't quite understand that, but let's keep moving ahead. The green value is 0.613. So we come up here and add the green value. And now we need to add the blue and then that error should go away. The blue has a value of negative 0.01. Add in the blue braces, semicolon. There we go. So when you're making a vector in VEX, you can use these curly braces to do that. So if we highlight this point wrangle, and look at this branch of our nodes, of our node graph. We make the shape and then this adds the rest data and the color data. If we take a look at it, here it is. Notice that it's still a perfect tetrahedron because there's no points being moved around at all. We only have two lines of X. We make a copy of the original position and then we add the color. Once again, the CD vector, capital C, lowercase v, the case is important. If you use a lowercase c, look what happens. Houdini doesn't recognize that as a, it assumes that as some other type of data that you might be using for other purposes. But if you use a capital C, lowercase d, it assumes you want color. So I wanted to explore one other way of doing this. And that was, okay, if I come over here and call this vector color, it won't display green here because color isn't a built-in Houdini recognized vector. It's in the spreadsheet and notice in the spreadsheet is showing up as a float. And we also get this little green squiggle line that says um, something's going on here. And what's happening is because this isn't a vector that, or, or a name that Houdini recognizes, we need to let it know what type of data it is and it's storing a vector. So once we say we want this to be a vector with this X, Y, and Z values, the error goes away and it adds the three components of the color vector to our geometry spreadsheet. So here if we return to the scene view and look at our tetrahedron. Nothing has changed. If you highlight the platonic solid node or the wrangle node, there's no visible difference between them yet. And that is because behind the scenes, we've made a copy of the positions and we've added color data, but it's not in a name, it's not in a format that Houdini recognizes as color. So that led me to the idea of let's delete this color. So now I wanted to see if I could take the color data from this node and transfer it over to this geometry so that it would be shaded green. To do that, I'm going to use an attribute copy node. We're gonna copy from the right to the left. Now, if we highlight this, it's still gray. The green didn't get applied. And if we look, you can see on the wrangle node, the color vector is there, but we know that that's not the name that Houdini wants for color. It wants capital C, lowercase d. So in the attribute copy node, let's specify, we can say we wanna copy the color attribute 
from this geometry spreadsheet coming in from the right, and we want to copy it over to the geometry spreadsheet coming from the left, but we want to give it the name capital C lowercase d. When we do that, the, the color is transferred over. If we don't give it the name CD, Houdini doesn't realize that it needs to actually display that color. But if we name it capital C lowercase d, it, it is colored. Now, if it's, once again, case sensitive, if you use a lowercase cd, it's not going to display the color. Capital C lowercase d, it does. And if we select this node and look at the spreadsheet, this is something that I found a little odd. Normally, when you add a color, the components of the color are indexed RGB. So for example, let's just go ahead and cut this node out. And let's just add the color node back again. Just give it a green or something. So here, instead of taking the color data from the wrangle and copying it over, we just picked some, some new color. And in the spreadsheet, you can see the color is the color data is here in three columns, the red, green, and blue columns, and they're, the index are named RGB. But when we did an attribute copy from the wrangle to the geometry here, it's no longer indexed as RGB. It's now indexed as 0, 1, 2. But it does copy the color data over and it does display correctly. If anyone knows why the attribute copy doesn't or why it's in the spreadsheet it's not indexed RGB, I would be very interested to understand that. But this is what I would wanted to share with you is that the rest node, the color nodes are nothing more than just very simple VEX commands. And if you use the names for the vectors that Houdini is expecting, everything works out great. So if you use a capital P for position, it recognizes that. If you use capital C, lowercase d for color, it recognizes that. But like what we did here is we didn't use CD, we used our own name for color. It added the data to the spreadsheet, but it didn't display in the view. So, but if we copy it over to this other branch, give it the right name, everything is fine. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.